Mr. Speaker, sir, thank you for giving me an opportunity to also contribute to this motion of approving um, senators, which include myself, to serve in these two very important sessional committees. Mr. Speaker, like my chair had spoken earlier on, last year we, I had an opportunity to sit former chair, last year, and hopefully future chair. Last year, I got an opportunity to sit in almost 90 sittings where we looked at um, luminous documents coming from different uh, county governments. One of the key most important thing for this house to understand and also for the general public to understand is that the work that we're doing, even in that committee, there's very little that we could be able to change because what the Auditor General has already established will not be able to change. The biggest problem we have is that really for me, Mr. Speaker, sir, I see is on the issue of the implementation. And I'd like to urge my colleagues in this house to really take the time seriously to look at the Auditor General reports. I, I see the documents which were, paper, which were tabled yesterday in this house. And we have about uh, almost uh, 20 reports. And all these reports, we'll have to sit down and look at them. At the end of the day, we come up with implementations. We came up with recommendations that have got to be implemented. We don't have an implementation committee. And I think that is where we need to be looking at so that we can ensure that we work very diligently in ensuring that the people in the county governments who expect us to be able to call in their governors here to explain how they spend the money will be able to be satisfied. There's a huge misconception, Mr. Speaker, sir, out there. People expect that uh, at any given time, we can call any governor to be able to come. I wish we could be able to do that. But the reality is that we have a lot of backlog. The first committee did not do much because there was a fight between the governors you know, and the senators, which eventually the Supreme Court was able to pronounce itself. But I want to really thank the leadership for having looked at the work that we did last year and propose that they retain us for another year. That is a lot of honor. And we want to assure everyone in this house, including the public, that when we are seated there, our job is to ensure a fiduciary responsibility. There is a lot that we can do. And uh, that committee last year, and I hope that we'll be able to do that this time around, worked on a fiduciary risk report. This fiduciary risk report was very clear that in most county governments, the governors were not following the Public Audit Act. They were also not following the, uh, the, uh, the Procurement Act or even the PFM Act. So I hope that this time around, as we sit here and say, oh, I wish that uh, a PAC can be able to do their job faster, even as the senators, it behooves us to be able to look at the Auditor General report. There is a lot of confusion between the Auditor General and the control of budget. I have a bill in this house, which I hope that the majority, and particularly the majority leader, will be able to support me on this bill. Because this bill is a county oversight bill. This is a bill that during the public participation, it was fought heavily by the governors. Because they don't want to be, to be questioned as to why they are using their money. We're talking about involving, they are looking at the control of budget. I was listening very keenly to the majority leader when he was saying that the control of budget ought to be a friend of this house. It is true. But we've got to reduce this into legislation. We have to involve the communities out there in the budget making process. Currently, the community is, is not involved in the, in the, in the budget making process. So you'll find that even MCAs will start talking about getting their ward development fund. We can do away with this argument of ward development funds if we involve the community at the budget making process so that each, each um, uh, MCA would be saying at the end of the day, I expect that certain projects will be delivered by this county government that I serve in. So Mr. Speaker, as, as we move into this second term, and I hope that the House will be able to approve us, we commit to be able to expedite. There are certain reports, and I've always suggested to my uh, colleagues that 
when you are looking at reports of 2013, 2014, 2015, 2016, there's really nothing that can change. In fact, I was suggesting that we just adopt those reports as there. Because we are looking at only the executive. We have not looked at even the assembly. So the amount of work in that committee really requires people to be able to be committed, to sit even during recess, so that we can actually be able to catch up. So as I wind up, Mr. Speaker, sir, I think there are three key legislations that even governors out there ought to know. Number one, the Public Audit Act is very clear. Number two, the PFM Act is very clear. So if you violate both the Public Audit Act and the PFM Act, when you come to us, the only thing we'll do is to make sure that we remind you that and, of course, recommend that you face the consequences as stipulated in Article 226 of the Constitution. With those few remarks, Mr. Speaker, sir, I beg to support. We are on recess. Let's do all those trips. But during the, the time when we're supposed to be here, let us come here so that we can actually be able to conclude all the businesses which are in the House. Uh, I support the, the motion. And with all these few remarks, I say thank you.